Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can just be here in your name, Lord Jesus. That we can praise and we can worship your name. That we have the freedom just to shout your name from the rooftops. That we have the freedom to proclaim your name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you will just work in our hearts this morning. In our minds and in our souls, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just turn around and say hi to someone. Let you go.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are moving in this place, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit here this morning.
praises unto your name. Just take the time to worship him. Just thank you for who he is. Thank you for what you've done in our lives. Thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the adoration. It souls thy holy name. Father, you are awesome. You're magnificent. You're marvelous. You're an awesome God. I want you to just speak in your own voice and tell him how much you appreciate him. Just thank him for your children. Thank him for your wife. Thank him for your husband. Thank him for your parents. Thank him for provision. Thank him for healing. Thank him for traveling mercies. Thank him for his Jehovah Rock in your life and in your family's lives. Thank him for that. He is the Yahweh. He is the great I am. There is none beside him. There will never be anyone beside him. He is our Heavenly Father. He deserves all the praise. And this morning he just wants to hear your voice saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're a great God. Thank you, Lord, for going before me. Thank you for protecting me from things I did not see and I did not know. Thank you for the blood that never loses power. Come on, church, just worship him. Just thank him. By his stripes we are healed. Give thanks unto the Lord. Praise him with everything that you have. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the living God. Our God is alive. He is not dead. Our God is alive. Now and forevermore. We give you praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We exalt your holy name. Be lifted up in this place. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Praise unto God. Worthy 
Oh, 
leave us alone the way you left. You left us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way with us this morning. Walk through every heart and every home. Touch these young people. Bless them. Let their hearts be open to receive your word. The word that has been prepared. We bless your holy name, Father. We ask that you bless the vessel that has been sent to speak your oracles unto you. To feed the flock of God. We pray a blessing unto him. We anoint him and sanctify him. We declare that he is sent by God. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your holy name, Lord. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone who believes, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I usually I would say, uh, please take a seat. <laughs> but already I see we are already seated this morning. Um, I'm tasked to take up the offering and also give you some few announcements. But before we get into that, quickly we just want to find out if is there anyone who is visiting Betulam for the very first time. Can we just ask that you raise your hand? We just want to welcome you this morning. Is there anybody visiting Betulam for the first time? If you are here, ah, welcome, sir. Good to have you. Yes, awesomeness. Uh, if you are, please keep your hand raised. Welcome. I see there's more at the back three. God bless you. Uh, please keep your hand raised. Our ushers and hostesses are trying to locate you. Oh, there's two or three more at the top in Africa. God bless you. Welcome to South Africa. We love you. <laughs> We're just getting these three more or four more there in the balcony as well. They're on their way. Uh, they will give you a cup. That cup has got cappuccino in it. And uh, on behalf of our senior pastors and the elders of our church, we really appreciate you and thank you so, so much uh, for joining us this morning. We hope that you will enjoy the service with us and uh, you will not make this your last visit. Please do visit again. And as you know, if you visit us for the second time, we consider you as family. Uh, we are called Betulam, the house of peace, if you did not know. And I must also extend uh, a warm welcome to those who are joining us online. If it's your first time, we really appreciate you spending your data on us. And we hope that you will enjoy the service with us this morning. Your cup of cappuccino awaits for you. Uh, so please do make some time to visit us in-house as well. So just a few announcements quickly. We've got Kids Church running concurrently with the church service. As you know, all activities are now open and ready to serve. So if you've got children, please just ask our ushers and hostesses there. We'll show you exactly where the kids are. They're having lots of fun there. School of the Word usually takes place straight after church. However, just for today, we would like to render an apology on behalf of Pastor Martin, who is uh, serving and officiating a funeral for one of our church members this morning. So we will not have a school of the word for today. Prayer meetings takes place Mondays at 6 p.m. right here in the church auditorium. And we also have grief share that is starting on Tuesday evening. Uh, so please, if you haven't put your name down or you haven't made your payment, please make sure that you do that. Grief share starts on Wednesday at half past six. All right. Uh, youth is on Friday at 7 p.m. for those of you who've got youth and would like to send them. Or if you are youth and you are here, please make sure you diarize that 7 p.m. we meet here at the church. Uh, baptism uh, alongside baby dedication is also next Sunday, which is the 14th of April. Please, if you haven't collected your form, you haven't filled them in, or if you haven't submitted them, uh, we ask that you do so kindly today and diarize that it is next Sunday week Sunday in case you want to buy a new outfit um, for dedication and baptism as well. Uh, do join us for tea and coffee straight after church. Our guests, special guests, visitors, please don't rush out on my left, your right. Uh, we've got a uh, foyer, the area information area. Please come and have that cappuccino with us. We would like to get to know you better and also to greet you as well. Then it's time for offering. Hallelujah. It's time to sow into the kingdom of God. I'll ask the technical team just to be ready with the music. Uh, if they can, 
um, and I'm going to ask you just to have your tithes and your offering or your love offering with you in your hand. We're going to pray over that as well. I must make a special announcement because we've got a special guest this morning. We will be taking up a second offering at the end of the service. Uh, so please do note that part as well. For those of you who would like to utilize a card facility machine, the ushers and hostesses are ready to serve you. You may make your way there uh, to be served in that one. We've got a basket in the front and then there's another one at the back. So I'm going to kindly ask that you stand with us while we pray for your seed before we give. Are you ready to give this morning? Hallelujah. Remember what the Bible says, God loves, eh? All right. Please do not give when you're not cheered up yet, but let's pray for you to be cheered. Father, we bless these, your people. I bless the seeds that have been prepared, my God, joyfully to sow into your kingdom, Lord. Bless them, multiply, and replenish them, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, for those who do not have a seed this morning, but would love to give into your kingdom. I ask Jehovah Jireh that you provide for them so that when they have, Lord, they may be able to bring into your kingdom and sow into your kingdom, Father. I bless them right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and everyone who believes say it. Amen. God bless you. You may give this morning. See, we're going to have a challenge at the back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The music is not playing yet, so the people are not moving yet. We only move on music. Let's get some music going. So that we can bring our offering. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who are moving without music. Thank you for those who are moving and there's no music. Hallelujah. Um, the reason being that uh, Pastor Les, the Siba, is uh, doing the sound this morning as well as being up here. That's why he had to run back for the music. And there we go. It's a little bit late, isn't it? Oh, yes. in this place. Come on. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. You know, we sing and say that God is on the move. Sometimes we don't realize God is really on the move because we often focus on the wrong things. Um, I was, I was in, in, uh, in Cape Town this past week from Monday to, uh, to when was the week? Saturday, yesterday, and we attend Global Church Network. And you know, in parts of the world, the church is growing so fast that they cannot keep up having pastors coming out of Bible college to keep up with those churches. There is such a major lack, uh, shortage of pastors at the moment around Asia, India, so many places where there's so many people getting saved. We had a pastor of the Philippines who, who was sharing their testimony, and he said just last year in the Philippines, and Bishop, we and I spoke about this as well, through his church, 120,000 people came to salvation. In one year, there's an amazing move of God throughout the world, an incredible move of God. While some people in Africa and in America play church, these people are meaning business with God. 
lot of people are meaning business with God, and the two church is growing at an incredible pace. And uh, we are so happy that when God is on the move, we can be part of that move as well. So don't think when you listen to certain media outlets that the church is dwindling. It's not. Depends on what. There is a few people making, making show business out of church business. But, uh, but the church is going really, really well. Even when the church is not perfect, it's still the best place to be. You want to need to know this. Don't run away when there's a bit of storms. Remain on the boat. It's the best place to be. Even the stormy waters remain in the boat. It's the best place to be. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We are really blessed this morning. We have Bishop Samuels with us. He was here last year, just about a year ago. And uh, he was such a blessing last year. But last year was like hit and run. He just came in late Saturday. He preached the morning, boots and back to Joburg. And uh, this year, I caught him at the ankle. I said, whoa, whoa, slow down. Come on, come, come, come. We're going we're gonna to spend some time together. So I had the blessing to, p- to pick him up in Johannesburg yesterday when we landed from Cape Town. So we spent the whole afternoon together last night. And we will be spending today together as well before he goes back tonight. And uh, what a great man. Became a great friend. It was just so great to connect so well. So when I heard that he's back in South Africa again, I put up my hand very fast to say, please, we need him to come to Bet Shalom again. So we are so blessed. You will remember last year. He was a tremendous blessing. If you didn't have it last year, uh, this morning you will be truly blessed with his ministry. Uh, he's from Jamaica. And uh, they do outreaches all over the world. They are involved in so many places in the world through their church from Jamaica. And I was so blessed last night when he shared so many things with me, what they are doing, reaching out. They are absolutely a missional church, a church that reaches out to people that are in need. And I was so inspired last night just by spending time with you, sir. Really, it was so great. So we're going to ask you to put your hands together and welcome Bishop Samuels with a really warm Betzalom welcome. Amen. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus a big hand clap. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor be to him who sits upon the throne. And he is the one to be feared and to be worshipped. And it is indeed a joy to be here again in this house and, and with your pastor and his wife. Tremendous blessing they have been to me and we have kept in touch over the time. And it was a real joy to be back here in South Africa. It has been a tremendous week so far. Um, as usually, I don't leave home during Easter, but um, the call came ringing concerning um, what I believe God wants to say and do in this time. I don't take our gathering lightly, because every time we come together, it's an opportunity for God to transform us and to change us into the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I really want us to set our hearts in a place because without revelation, without understanding of God's word, it, we will leave without being changed and being impacted by heaven. And so I wanted to take one moment and stand with me this morning. Stand with me this morning. Amen. I wanted, I wanted us to take... I want us to take a minute, uh, a minute or so, and I want you just to begin to pray. Just ask the Lord, Lord, reveal yourself to me through your word. Touch my life. Touch the life of the next person beside me. Let this time be a tr- transformative m- a moment in, this, in my life and in this house. Let there be signs and wonders and miracles and healings. Let no one leave here the same way they came. Come on, just take one minute and begin to pray. Just begin to pray right now, all over the place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for understanding. 
in this place, Father. Lord, we will never be the same again. We will not leave here the same way we came. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that with you, nothing is impossible, Lord. But all things are possible to those who believe. And tonight, today we believe, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that there will be transformation, that there will be something good will happen in the midst of your people today. Father, we trust you, Lord Jesus. You are Lord. You are Lord. We declare your lordship in this place, Lord. For your presence means more to us than anything else. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We glorify your name. We lift you up, God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to take one more minute. Just turn to your neighbor and begin to pray for your neighbor. Just pray for your neighbor. Just take a minute to pray for them and bless them right now. Come on, just touch your neighbor and begin to pray for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said this, oh, the house of the Lord is called a house of prayer for all nations. Hallelujah. Just take that, that minute to do that. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Oh, God, bless every person every partner, every person in this house, Lord Jesus. May your hand be upon every person in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, meet every need, Father. Open every place, God, that has been, oh God, ravished by the enemy, Father. Restore, God, heal, Father. Bless, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're going to do in this house. Oh, our expectation is from you and of you. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise for the miracles, the healings, the deliverances, the opening of eyes. Father, we give you praise. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor and tell him something good is about to happen to you. Come on, tell him something good is going to happen to you. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As I said before, and pastor said that, you know, I'm from Jamaica, Montego Bay, Jamaica, where God lives. And he visits South Africa. Amen. Yeah. Um, greetings from my wife. I know at this time they are still sleeping. You're seven hours ahead of us. So they are still fast asleep. But I know their hearts are with us. And um, they've been praying for us even throughout this time. And I believe today as we share the word of God that that is that the revelation of who he is will become clearer to us and that we'll be able to move into a different dimension with God. I want to talk today about sight beyond what I see. Sight beyond what I see. And I like to read from a verse or two from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And this is a prayer of Paul to the Ephesian brethren. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable surpassing power to them who believe. The power is the same as that which raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. And magnify your name. I want to begin to, today to show the importance of sight. Because there cannot be sight without light. Let me say it again. There cannot be sight 
without light. You may have eyes, but it doesn't mean that you have sight. For blind people have eyes, but they still cannot see. And it's only when light comes that we have the ability to see. And it is very important because if you cannot see, then you cannot tell the true nature of things. I notice this church inside is painted black. If you turn off the light, close the door, you'll find out although you have eyes, you cannot see. Though you have eyes, you cannot see. Because light is not within you. As a person, biologically, there is no light in you. For you to see, light has to come from outside. And those who you study the, the whole dynamics of your eyes, you know that you cannot see unless light enters through that little hole, the retina, and it goes and it goes on the optic nerve, so to speak, and it is able to produce sight. We're going somewhere. And so, and so, Paul in his writing to the Ephesians brethren, this is one of the books that, that I call in the same line as Genesis. Because Paul goes back even before the world began. And he says, God loves us and chose us even before the world began. And Paul began to show the exceeding riches of the grace and the power of God to those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives. He began to show the lavishness of God and what God has prepared for all those who have come into a relationship with him. And he was there riding and, and sharing because he himself had such revelation of who Jesus is. And no one who have the revelation of Jesus can ever remain the same. And so he was there talking, to, writing to them, you know, talking about all the great things that have been afforded. And in verse 18, he stopped a while because he wasn't sure that everybody was receiving and everybody was conceiving what was being told to them or what they've come into. And not because someone is in church, it does not mean that what is said is being understood. Because there are three things about the kingdom of God. And every man have to walk in that dimension so that they may live successfully in life and navigate life successfully. First of all, if there has to be information. That is knowledge. Knowledge. The Bible says, my people are destroyed not because they don't sing worship songs or they don't pray, or they don't fast, or they don't do all those kind of things. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for what you don't know you can't access. I said what you don't know you can't access. And therefore, um, I mean, um, uh, Paul, uh, the, the, the writer tells us, he says we must seek knowledge, seek to know. Paul says, that I may know him. There must be a pursuit. For ignorance is not a virtue. I would like to say it again. I said ignorance is not a virtue. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. All he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That means God says you cannot go 
far with me unless you position yourself to receive knowledge. Are you listening to me? And so Jesus said, learn of me, not just from me, but learn of me because I'm your example. Learn of me. But not only that, knowledge is important, but, but knowledge, with knowledge you have to have understanding. Because you can have knowledge, but you don't understand what you have now heard. Are you listening to me? Because without understanding, there cannot be application. What you don't understand, you can't apply. Anybody still here in the house? You can't apply what you don't understand. So Solomon says, with all you're getting, get understanding. Because whatever I understand, I can apply. And it's application that will bring me into manifestation. Are you listening to me? And so therefore, therefore, within the context of church, we can have knowledge. But if we do not apply the knowledge we have received, then it will not do us any good. So James says, James says the man who hears the word of God and does not apply it is like the man who looks in the mirror, sees himself, and, and sees what he's about. But he moves away from the mirror and forget what he, what he just saw. Because he's not a doer of the word, the information he has received. So knowledge without understanding so we can apply it, will not do you any good. And that's why many times within the context of church, many people get information. They don't understand it. And because there is no understanding, they can't apply it. That's why Jesus said, ears they have, but they don't hear. Eyes they have, but they don't see. And they don't understand. And because they don't understand, they cannot produce fruit. Oh, God Almighty. You see, you see, you cannot manifest God unless you have an understanding of him. You cannot really truly worship unless you have an understanding of him. Jesus said to the woman, the woman said to, at, at, the, at the well, the woman said to Jesus, he says, our fathers worship in the mountain. You Jews, you, you, you worship here in, in Jerusalem. Jesus said to him, to, to her, he, he said to her, we know who we worship. We have an understanding of our God. We know, we understand him. And we worship him from a place of understanding. We understand who he is. Because unless you understand who he is, you will not apply him in your life. And without the application of God in your life, you would not see wisdom, you will not see result in your life. Because let me tell you something, it's very important for us to understand that the world is not just going to be one just because we have nice words and we, we preach nice messages and, 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 and uh, all our, our, our sermons are, are so well put together. Paul says, my preaching and my speaking is not just by man's wisdom, but he says, I come to you in the power of God, that your faith will Will not stand just in the wisdom of men, but your faith will stand in the power of God. For what you know must be able to apply, be applied to where you are. And when you apply, when you see results, the Bible says men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We people are not just moved because we have good singing and we have good cheering. That won't keep people. But when they can apply the word of God to their lives and see result in their life. That is what will cause them to know that there is a God in Israel. Anybody with me? You see, we got to understand that there must be an understanding. That's why a prayer must be, Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may understand. So Paul prayed, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart, how I many of you know that your heart has eyes? 
Because you got to understand, you got to understand that when you're born again, when you're born again, when you're born, your spirit is made brand new. Your spirit is made brand new. Not your body. Not even your mind. For first of all, man is a tripartal being. He's first spirit. Man is spirit. That's why when I look at you, I don't see the real you. I only see the house that house you. Are you listening to me? Because you are first spirit. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid a ransom for us, and when we come to him, he, we are changed in our spirit. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, when he came, the, the Pharisees who came by night and came to Jesus because he knew that there was something about Jesus that was different than all the other rabbi. He says, Rabbi, that means you're an expert teacher. I have seen the things you have done. The miracle, the manifestation, the application of God's word. I've seen that. And I, I'm, 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 I want to ask you a question. How can I inherit eternal life? What was the first word Jesus said to him? Jesus said, except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. He says, you can't coach yourself into this. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't use any kind of discipline to come into this. You've got to be born into this. And anything, watch this, anything that is born, any living thing that is born, is when they are born, it's the first time they are here. They are brand new. They have never been here before. Nothing that is born has ever been here before. Nobody not talking to me. And so Jesus said, if you're going to enter the kingdom of God, if you're going to come into eternal life, you have to be born again. There got to be, and I may use this word, there got to be a burning. <laughs> a burning has to happen. That's the word I make up. Don't worry about it. I mean, you, 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 there got to be, and everything that is born comes new. That's why the scripture said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have what? become new. So the newness of life that comes has to come through the born again experience. And not only that, the thing, that whatever living thing that is born carries the same constituency of that which is born from. How many of you ladies have children? You got children, right? Huh? When you were pregnant, what did you expect? You ex expect something to come out looking like you? Were you expecting a goat? Or a pig? You were expecting some, something that would come looking like you, have the capacity to function like you, carrying your DNA, carrying like you. And so your expectation is the same. So God says, except a man be born again, born again. Then in verse, verse 5 of, of John Three, it says, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Then he went on to say, watch this, he went on to say, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you walk to an altar or wherever you were and you said yes to Jesus, God goes on the birthing stool. Oh God Almighty. He goes on the birthing stool and he births you, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. For that which is spirit is spirit. Oh God Almighty. So God says, when you came, I birth you, spirit, spiritual. Are you listening? He birthed you. So now, watch this. Now you carry his DNA. 
Nobody's not talking to me. You carry his DNA. That's why we call him Father. And if you want to know whose father that baby is, what do you do? You do a DNA test. And that man cannot hide. Are you listening to me? So God says, you, you can't call me father if you don't carry my DNA. Oh God. That's why in the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, 26, hear what God says. He says, he created man in his own image and his likeness. Those two words, and we don't have time to go into all of it, but those two words depict that you have the ability to act like. Nobody is talking to me. It doesn't mean that God has your nose and God has your mouth and God is black or God is white or God is yellow. That's not what he's talking about. He says you carry my likeness. That means there are dimensions of, of me that can oper you can operate in because you have the same, cons oh God, you came out of the same constituency as I have. That's why the Bible says he breathes into man. He breathes into man. The word breath there means spirit. Oh God Almighty. He breathed into man and man became a living being a living soul he came alive he could not live without the infusion of the spirit of God so it was the spirit of God that made man alive oh you're not hearing me and man is so unique watch me today man is so unique because everything else God wanted he spoke he spoke he spoke. When he wanted the fish, he spoke to the sea. And fish came in abundance. When he wanted plant, he spoke to the ground. And plant came up in abundance. When he, watch this, when he spoke to the sky, out of the sky come birds flying all over. But when he wanted man, when he wanted man, he didn't speak to any element. He spoke to himself. And he said, let us let us make man, form man, not just speak man into being, but form man. He's intentional, he's deliberate, he's something above anything else that he has ever created. He said, this one, I'm creating him in my likeness and in, oh God, a pattern that you never saw before. I'm creating him. When, he, when I look at him, I can be proud and say, that's my son. Oh, you're listening to me. And you know, you know the story quite well after a while what happened. But, but let me stop long enough to say this. That our original history never start with sin. All right, let me come over here because over here didn't hear me. I said our original history never started with sin. Our original history started with God. Anybody still in the room? It started with God. Sin was an interruption. Because the plan of God must remain. That's why, watch this. That's why God never terminate man permanently. You know why he didn't? Because man's life was not, did not become just out of the dust. Man became alive because God's spirit went into him and he lived. And in essence, spirit cannot vanish away. No, no, no. That is why every man shall live forever, but it depends on where they live. No, man. No. Sinners is going to live forever. But they don't have eternal life. Because eternal life is a quality of life. Oh God. It's not just longevity. It's a quality of life. Are you listening? So every man is going to live forever. Whether you're going to live it down, down below. Are you going to live it up above? Are you listening to me? And so 
and so, and so, and so, and so. God could not banish. So he had to redeem man. Oh God, I, you don't redeem or restore something that was never there. How many of you know, if you're going to restore something, it has to be stored before. Are you listening? And so, Ephesians 1, let's look at Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. Redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Watch this. He says we have what? Redemption. So the word redemption means to buy back, to ransom, to restore. So what happened in Genesis 1, 26? He says God made man in his own image and his own likeness. So when sin came, what happened to, 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 to man? Man could not now walk in the image of God. So in essence, he lost the image of God. The likeness of God. Now he cannot operate in that dimension because the dimension he was, God could come down in the cool of the day and have fellowship with him. Now he is not of the same kind. He is now alienated. He can't be compatible with God. And so he became an enemy to God. Are you listening to me? Because you cannot have true intimacy unless the person is of the same kind. That's why we don't marry goat. Nobody talking to me. We don't marry a cow because they are not of the same kind. We don't, because they are not of the same kind. And when God wants a kind to fellowship with, oh God, he did not come down to the donkey. He did not come down to the cow, although he created them. He did not come down to the horse, although he created them, because they were not of the same kind. Oh God. But when God wanted something of the same kind, the Bible said he breathed into this man and this man became a living soul in his likeness and in his image. So in the cool of the day, he could come down and have fellowship with man because he could relate to man. He could relate to man. And so when Jesus Christ came, he came to restore, restore that kind, that fellowship, that intimacy, that now man now can come back on that level that he now can relate to God in such a way that God can say to him, be fruitful, be multiplied, have dominion over fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air. I give you power because you are, oh God, you came from me and that's why you can walk in authority. You cannot walk in authority if you are not in Christ. Are you hearing me today? Watch this. So, so watch what Ephesians 1 verse 3 says. And I want to put it up if you can. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, past tense. Who has blessed us? Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis. Because God prepared everything for Adam. Everything he needed was already provided. Everything that he needed, even if he could not see, was already there. Hear what he says. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, past tense. He is not going to bless you. He has already blessed you. The problem is we don't know. What we don't know, we can't access. Oh, nobody's not talking to me. And what we can't understand, 
we can't apply it to all hearts. So he says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus who has blessed us with some spiritual blessing. With every spiritual blessing. In every dimension, in every facet, in every era. He says, I bless you with spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, I'm blessed already. But he says, in heavenly places. So how do I access that? If it is in heavenly places. How do I access that? He has blessed me. Let's turn to Ephesians 2 verse 6. Let's look at Ephesians 2 verse 6. Are we still here? Touch your neighbor and say, are you still here? We're going to find out if you're here. Because we're going somewhere this morning. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to 5. Let's go to 5 first. Verse 5. He says, he says, and they're coming, they're coming, they're doing it, they're doing their work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. The verse 5 says, even when we were dead in trespasses, he has what? Made us alive together with Christ. That means even before you came and surrendered your life to God, God already planned for you and he already see you alive in Christ. So when you came, in essence, God never sat up there and said, okay, okay, he's coming now, he's coming now. Let, 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 me, get, let me get all the things that he needs. No, no, no. He already prepared it because he had already anticipated your coming. Oh God. So he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Next verse, verse 6. Watch what verse 6. And has what? Raised us up with him. He has what? Raised us up with him. So Philemon, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came from the grave, I came up with him. Oh God Almighty. I said, I came up with him. I said, I came up with him. I said, I came up with him. So he came up with him. And what happened? And seated us. Oh God Almighty. That's why you, you and I, eyes have to be open and sight has to be given. Are you listening? Because we are now seated and seated us. Seated us with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 6 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1, 3 says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. How did I get there? How did I get there? Ephesians 2, 6 says, and we were what? raised up with Christ, raised up with Christ, and caused to be seated at the right hand of God. One of the things I discovered about the, the, under the Levitical law, when we had the priests would go into the temple and they would, and they would offer the sacrifice continually. One of the furniture you would never see in the, in the tabernacle was a chair. You see table. You will see the table of, of shoe bread. You will see the, the Ark of the Covenant. But there was no seat, no chair in the top. Because the priest, it was a continuous work. Every year, every time, he had to come. There was no time to, to say it's all over. It's done. It's finished. They had to offer sacrifice again and again. But Jesus, everybody said, but Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. But Jesus. But when Jesus came, the Bible says, once and for all, his sacrifice was able to cover the past, the present, and the future. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? And when he cried on the cross, it is finished. It is done. And he offered that sacrifice in the blood, in the heavenly God says, I'm pleased with it now. You, it is done. And the Bible said, he was seated. He sat at the right hand. No other priest could do that. 
because the work will never finish. But Jesus, once and for all, finished the work and sat at the right hand of God. And while he was at the right hand of God, God, Jesus said, I got some other sons. I got some other people. I got some other people who now believes in me. And I'm going to make a cheer for them. So God made a cheer for Philemon. God made a chair for Pastor Yanni. God made a chair and he said, sit with me. Sit with me. And sit in me. It is done. Sit in me. That now I have accomplished. Oh God Almighty. I have accomplished. Watch this. What, what he says. What was he said. In, in, in Ephesians 2 verse 6. I want to go back to Ephesians 2 verse 6. Because it's very important. Um, Ephesians. He says raise us up. And seated us with him. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. And so. When we go back. To Ephesians 1.18. Here Paul was praying. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. That light will be shone upon your heart. Because there are some things I want you to see. Some things that the world can't see. Some things that the unregenerated man cannot see. Something that is accessible by those who are born again. He says, I pray that the, your heart will be enlightened so that you may know the hope of your calling. The hope of your calling. That simply means what is entailed in your calling. Did just God call you to be ordinary? Did God call you to be struggling all the time? Did God call you to be always under the weather? Are you listening? He says, this is a holy calling. Watch what he says. Watch what he said. And what are the riches? Everybody say riches. How many of you are excited about riches? You know, church people are like this. You know, anytime you talk about riches, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, because some people think that, you, you know, Christians should be poor. Because blessed are the poor. But they forgot that it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, not pocket. Nobody talking to me. And poor in spirit means that you're desperate, you're hungry. You know you'll have the need for God. <laughs> Are you listening? And watch this. He says, I want you to see what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. First of all, we are God's inheritance. I said we are God. Jesus made us God's inheritance. Why? Because when God made you and I, he made us for his presence. He made us for his delight. Are you listening to me? I said he made us for his delight. For a never at one time. Listen to me today. Listen to the few moments I have. Listen. Never at one time has God ever said to any of the angels, you are my son. As powerful they are. As great as they are, God has never said, you are my son. But to you who missed it, you who strayed away from God, but God redeemed you to himself. Why? Because of the connection and the reason why he formed you and made you. Are you listening? So he says in John 1 and verse 12, he says, to as many as what? Receive him. To them he gives the right to be what? To be called. To be called the sons of God. And God never called any angel son. I said he never called any angel son. But you he calls son. There is a special connection between you and God that angels don't have. I hardly hear any. I said there's a special connection. He never said to one angel. Actually, this is what he says about angels. He says, angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are heir of eternal life. Are you listening? He said, angels, watch this, angels are waiting to help you. Oh, you understand? Angels are waiting 
to demonstrate the word of God on behalf of your life. Because they hearken to the voice of God's word. That is why there's nothing in your life that you can get help for. There's no tragedy in your life. There's no circumstances in your life that you cannot overcome because you have divine help. Help from God. The Bible says the angels of the Lord encampeth. It's a military term. Encampeth around you. That means they make an encampment. It's not just one little angel. The angel makes camp around you. Why? Because he, they are protecting God's inheritance. Nobody's not talking to me. You don't know how valuable you are before God. And God says, no one, no one is able to pluck you out of my hands. I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. I don't paint you, I engrave you. Painting can be erased. But when something is engraved, it is made out of the same material and stay in the same material. Nobody's not talking to me. So if you pluck the grave, the image from the, you're plucking the very, the very hand of God. Are you listening? And God says, I engrave you on the palm of your hand. That's why Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my hand because you are engraved in the palm of my hand. And anybody hurt you, hurt me. And God Almighty, judgment to those who hurt Christ. That's how special you are. So when you tell God you're a worm, you're embarrassing God. Could you imagine you look at your child and say, oh, what a beautiful worm. <laughs> no, you don't do that. No, you don't do that. And God says, watch this. God says, what I have done through redemption has brought you into a place that you have fellowship with me. But not only that, but I give you all the protection you need so that you may carry out my will on the earth. Anyone who understands that, you are not afraid of any demons, no principalities, no powers, no difficult circumstances. Are you listening? Because I know, apart from having God, I have an army around me. Nobody are talking. Hear what, hear what Paul said in Colossians 3. He says, he says, he says, set your affection on things above and not on things on earth. For your life, everybody say my, everybody say my life, is hid with Christ. Say it with me. Is hid with Christ in God. You see the process? My life is with Christ. And Christ is in God. So if you're going to get to me, <laughs> nobody not talking to me. If you got to get to me, there are some things, you, some persons you got to go through. And the person you got to go through declares himself, I am king of kings, lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the almighty one who was, who is, he, nobody has ever overthrown him. There have never been a coup d'etat in his, in his constituency. And he says, you are in me. And anybody who comes after you, Anybody who comes out, any devil, any circumstances, God said they have to go through me before they touch you. Oh, you're not hearing me. And he says, no man can pluck you out of my hand. The only thing you can do, you can walk out of his hand, but nobody can take you out of his hand. Nobody is talking to me today. Are you listening? Nobody can take you out. Why? Because your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. But let's look at the other verse. In, in, in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse and verse 18. Let's look at, quickly look at the other verse. And it says, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe? It is not just the greatness. It's the surpassing greatness. He says there is so much power available to you that there is absolutely nothing you cannot overcome. For with God all things are possible. Come on, say it like with me. With God all things and all, the last time I check it all mean all. Are you listening? It means everything. 
all things are possible. Then Jesus picked it up in another place. He says, all things are possible to everyone who believes. So with God, all things are possible. And then God says, you are in my likeness, you are in my image. Anyone who believes, all things are possible to you too. Oh God Almighty. So when I pray, I'm not praying to the wind. I'm not just saying words. Are you listening to me? I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where there is a God that I live in. But not only that, but this God gives me authority. And he gives me power. Notice I separate them. He gives me authority and he gives me power. But there's a difference. For the criminal, the gunman may have power, but he doesn't have authority. Because he has a gun beside him. And he has power. But he doesn't have authority. Because authority is the legal right to use power. Nobody was talking to me. I said the legal right. So the power, the police have power, but he also have authority. So here in Polikwani, the policeman goes out in the road. 105 pounds. There's a man coming on a 12-wheeler truck weighing 284 pounds man behind the steering. And he sees the policeman walks out and he raises his hand. How many of you know that that truck can make that policeman a pancake? <laughs> How many of you know that? Can make him a pancake. The man behind the wheel doesn't see power. He sees authority. Because when the policeman raises his hand, all of a sudden, he sees the president of South Africa. He sees the Congress. He sees the judge. And he sees the governor. And he sees prison. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And without even thinking, he moves his feet. Without even thinking, he moves his feet from the accelerator to the brake because he sees authority. Because that 105 pound man knows what is behind him, who is behind him, the authority that he has. And he's not afraid of that 16 wheeler truck. He's not afraid when he raises his hand. Oh God Almighty, everything has to come under subjection to him. And I want to tell you, he says, Behold, I give you authority in the same way that anything that comes in your life that doesn't match the, the, the wisdom of God, the purposes of God for your life, you have the authority to say you can't come in my house, you can't come in my finances, you can't do what you want to do in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. I have authority. So 10 years ago, 10 years ago, well, 11 years ago, when my son was born, my son was born, and after he was um, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. Nothing was coming from him. He wasn't walking. He wasn't. A year and a half passed. Nothing was happening. So we took him to the doctor. And when we took him to the doctor, they did all the scan and the MRI and all the things they did. And they found out that there was a gap in his brain. Space. And the space affects his mobility and his speech. They said he would never really walk. He would never really talk. They said you can try therapy. And probably he may have slight improvement. And for the therapy, just the first one was thousands of dollars. And I would have to travel every week, every week for three and a half hours one way, three and a half hours the other way. My wife and I, and another brethren that was there, we took the letters of, you know, you know to go to the therapy. And we, we took the letters. And I said, whose report will I believe? God, you give me authority. You yourself bore our sickness and carry our sorrows on your own body. And I would wake up every morning. 
I would lay my hands on him, anoint him with oil, and say, you shall walk and you shall talk. And that went on for a year. I said, you shall walk. Every morning again, you shall walk and you shall talk. Can I report to you today that he's walking and he's talking? His IQ is like one of 25 years. Last year, he, he, he published his first children's book at 11 years old. You hear me? Actually, he wrote it while he was 8 and published it while he was 11. Because, you see, the, you can de- whatever you tolerate, you can't change. All right, let me say it over here. Did I hear me? No, hear it from me. Whatever you tolerate, you can change. And, you know, believers have this thing to say, well, you know, when God get ready, he'll move. It's in his hands. Uh, yeah, no. no, no, no. God has done everything. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessing already in heavenly places. Are you listening? It's you now to access it. It's in you. It's upon you. Are you listening? And you have to access it. And how do we access it? Kings rule by decree. Kings rule by decree. It's in your mouth. Can I talk to anybody? I said it's in your mouth. Who shall ascend into heaven? As Paul said in Romans chapter 10. He says, who shall ascend in heaven to bring Christ down? Or who shall go into the abyss to bring him up? He says, the word is nigh you, even in your heart and upon your lips, so that if you confess with your mouth, say with your mouth, Confession means say the same thing. Say the same thing as Jesus. So if Jesus said, oh God, and you're seated with him, you cannot be out of accord with him. You've got to be in line with him. And if he says, by my stripes, you are healed, I have to confess the same thing. I've got to confess the same thing. So when sickness comes upon me, I have to say what Jesus is saying because I am seated with him. I'm in the same, oh God Almighty, I am seated with him. So I have to declare, by his stripes, I am healed. And when the financial pressure comes and your money becomes funny you got to say what he says he says he says i've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread the man who is with me the word he says the man who is with me always meditate on the word me the word day and night and the man who does that has authority because his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper let me tell you something there is no difficult financial situation in your life that you can't overcome nobody not talking to me i said you can't over there's no situation you can't overcome you know why you serve a lavish god I said you serve a lavish God. I want you to watch him in Genesis. So when he won fish, he didn't say, oh, let there be fish and a few barracuda and dolphin came. The Bible says the whole sea, multitude of fish. When he wanted trees, they came out of the ground in abundance. Are you listening to me? When he won stars and planets, he spoke. Even to this day, we are still counting. Nobody is talking to me. He flooded the whole thing. Let me tell you something. That's why Paul says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Riches what? In glory. That word, that word glory, you have to understand. He's not talking about just because he's in heaven. The word glory means brilliance, but it also means weight. It means weight. So in Jamaica, I don't know if it's in South Africa, but in Jamaica, when someone is very wealthy, we say he's weighty. He has weight. Because I'm excited to be with Pastor Johnny. I'm excited to be. And I'm so excited that I want to write every one of you a check for one million U.S. dollars. You notice some of you laugh. Some clap, but some laugh. 
Because they kind of look at this preacher up here and say, no, no, I don't think so. No, 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 no. He's just a preacher. No, I don't. I don't. A million dollars? Say, for instance, 100, 200, 300 people here. Like, no, no, no. In your mind, you said, I ain't putting my hope in that. But if I told you today that Bill Gates sent me here, and he gave me a message for all of you. He says, I wanted to deliver to every one of you one million U.S. dollars. Man, they'll be shouting and skipping, dancing, and man, you start to visualize the house on the hill, and are you listening? The new business you can open, all kind of thing going through your mind. You know why? Because Bill Gates is weighty. He's waiting. Are you listening to me? He's waiting. And God says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in oh God. Because he's waiting. There's no luck in him. Oh, he's able to make all grace abound towards you that you have all sufficiency at all times for every good work. There should be nobody in the body of Christ that complains about lack for there is no lack with our God and if we can see him as he is, oh God of mine, and who you are in him, there is no complaining, there is no bickering, there is no worries, no despondency. Anybody hearing me? That's why Jesus said, don't worry. Don't worry about anything. He says, watch the lily. Watch the lily of the field. Beautiful they are. Some of them only survive, only for a short period of time. But yet God decked them with such beauty that Solomon in all his beauty was not even close to them. And Solomon was a rich man. He could afford all kind of things. And God said, you see those lilies that only survive for a few days? I clothe them although I know they're going to wither seven days from now, eight days from now. I know that. He says, how much you, you who are creating my image, who I've caused to be partners with me, sitting with me in heavenly places, how much more will I not give you what you ask? For if you ask anything in my name I will do it I will do it I will do it for I have the capacity I have the capacity growing up I was, my parents weren't rich they didn't have not much they weren't rich but I received Jesus 13 years old God healed me from a swollen heart twice the normal size I wasn't supposed to pass my 16th birthday so when I talk about the power of God, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And I remember the times I, I, I went to school without, without money. Went to school without money. But I began to understand the father I am connected to. Can you understand? You see, your prayers, watch this. Your prayers cannot truly be effective unless you understand the fatherhood of God. That's why when Jesus, when Jesus taught them to pray, he started by saying, our father. I wish I had some other time to talk about it. Our father, which art in heaven. Because the concept of fatherhood has to be riveted in our mind for us to access what the father has. Anyway, and so, and so because I began to learn the word and learn what God says. And I would leave home without money and come back with change. And I didn't beg anybody. Are you listening to me? Because God says, I am your sufficiency. I know how to work for you. Are you listening to me? I am your father. For if your son asks an earthly father for fish, will, I, will he give him a serpent? If he asks for bread, will he give him stone? Will he, no, no earthly father. Good father. Good father will not give those children things that will hurt them. You look after their welfare. Are you listening to me? You'll buy things that they don't ask for. Nobody's not talking to me. Are you listening to me? You watch over them. You mean, they, they, they don't do anything. All they do is, is just ask. And sometimes they don't even ask. <laughs> they go into the fridge and just open and take. How many, how many of you know that your neighbor child can do that? 
Although you love your neighbor, child, they can't do that. They can't just walk in and, and go on your bed and open your refrigerator and take one. No, no, no. They're neighbor's child. But your son, your daughter, they have a right of access. Oh, you're not here. And God says, you have a right of access. That's why he says, come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain help in the time of trouble. There's no situation in your life that you cannot overcome. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your generation is. I don't care what happened in your background. I'm telling you what Jesus Christ has done for you has reversed every curse over your life. It has reversed everything that have hindered you in life. And God says you are now seated in heavenly places. And hear me now. Jesus is seated high above every principalities and power and every rule and dominion. And I'm seated with him in that place so that me every devil is under my feet every adverse circumstance is under my feet i'm not telling you that the oh god the seas of life may not get rough but i don't have to go under i walk upon the water i walk upon the seas are you listening to me and where there is luck i'll take what i have and bless it and when i bless it it will multiply oh god almighty anybody here today so God says, I want you to see the surpassing greatness of his power towards you. Don't take your praying lightly no more. Stand up in your family. I don't care what is happening. Stand up in your family and say, enough is enough. Satan, you're not going to rob my children. You're not going to rob my finances. You're not going to rob my progress in life. I'm here to show off the glory of God. And the glory is only showed off when there is result. So I want to talk to somebody. For your greatest enemy is not the devil. It is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is an unrenewed mind. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You and I are the sum total of our dominant thought. You cannot go further than your dominant thought. Over here, silence. Or, and over here. I'll soon be done. Yeah. The food is all right at home, so you don't have to worry. It won't, it won't burn. Yeah. You cannot go further than your dominant thought. That's why the Bible says you must meditate on the word of God day and night. Turn off TikTok. Am I talking to him? We call it Instagram. But we spend five hours. Oh, you'll get that tomorrow. Are <laughs> oh, you listening to me? And we fill our minds with things that are not, that will disable us, cut us off from accessing the greatness of what Jesus Christ died for 2,000 years ago. I'm here to talk to somebody who feels defeated. Who feel that you can't make it. I'm here to talk to somebody whose dream has seemingly terminated. I'm here to talk to somebody who think you're too old to go forward. Oh, that you, you, the, oh, guilt has covered your life because you think of what you should have done and you did not do it. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Caleb was 80 and 4 years. Oh, but he caught the concept of who God was and what he had. In and he says, give me this mountain. I'm 84 years old, but I'm not done. Nobody ever talking to me. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And, and that's why, that's why David says, that's why and you and I have to talk boldly like him. He says, I shall not die. I shall not die. But I shall live. Oh God. Because some of you, they want to take you out. Take you out by what is happening. But you got to declare God's word. I shall not die. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. For I am confident that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. No devil, you ain't taking me out before time. Because God must be glorified in me, in me, in my family, in whatever I do. God must show off. Are you hearing me? And God must show off. And that's why I don't have time to go into it. But Ephesians 1 says that to the ages to come, the ages to come, God will refer back to us of his lavishness, of his kindness, of his mercy god in ages to come will point back at you point back at you and tell all the angels and all the principalities and power and say watch watch what's your name what's your name quickly what's your name philemon, philemon. oh 
Oh my Lord, I thought I was the only one. So I pick on the right person. So God will look back at Philemon and say, watch Philemon, watch Philemon. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Look at the testimony he had. Look at my kindness upon him. When he was down and out of the, uh, uh, he believed my word. And watch what the breakthrough I gave in his life. Watch my mercy upon his life. Look at his generation. Look at, uh, look at how he turned around. He was a mess. He was a drug addict. He was, he was in the gutters. But I raised him up. And look at him now. Oh, see my power in his life. That's why if Ephesians 3 verse 10 says, watch what he says. He says, that the manifold wisdom of God the manifold wisdom of God, the manifold, that in the many-sided, many-faceted wisdom of God might be made known by the church to principalities and powers. That, that is why angels fold their wings at times to, to, to be taught what redemption looks like. Oh God Almighty. He says the church, the church becomes the teacher to principality because it's a church that shows what God is. Who God is. Are you listening to me? That's why when we call him Jehovah Jireh, oh, we see the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh. When we call him Jehovah Shammah, we see the manifestation of Jehovah. And the angels are watching. The angels are watching. Principalities are watching. And they're learning oh, of the graciousness of this God, of the power of this God. So God says, I want to show off myself through you, in you, Oh God Almighty, for you, I want to show that, that the whole through the old ages may know of my kindness, may show of my mercy. I say, God wants to show off on you. Begin to believe him and watch him show you, show himself off in your life. Provide for you, provide your need. I mean, break through healing and mercy and grace and joy and peace. Come, come for your life. And that's why the devil can't track you. He can't track you because the time when you should be in sorrow, you have joy. The time when you should be sad and down, your hands are lifted up and you're praising the Lord and the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. I'm talking to somebody tonight, today. I'm talking to somebody that have been discouraged. Talking to somebody that want to turn their back on God. I'm talking to somebody who have just relaxed and tolerate what's happening in your life. I want to tell you that God had not redeemed you for nothing. He redeemed and placed a precious, precious gift and a precious life inside of you. And God says, I want that Zoe life to begin to manifest around you. They must see and they may never ask again, where is your God? He is here, moving in our midst. <laughs> he is here to do miracles in your life. And there's nothing you face that this God can strain. Don't say it's over. It's not over yet. Because Jesus has veto powers. Nobody didn't hear me say. I said Jesus has veto powers. So when the council of darkness comes, I'm finishing on that, I promise you. <laughs> So when the, all right, let me finish with Colossians 2. Um, Colossians 2, starting from verse 14. And I, I promise you I'll finish with this. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, he's going to finish with this. Uh, uh, Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 2, 2. 1, 2, 2. Verse 14. Colossians 2. Are we there? No. Colossians. 2. two. Two. <laughs> Colossians 2. Are we there? He says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. Under the Roman system, every, every person who commit a crime or crime they would make a certificate and they would document you commit murder, you commit whatever, and they would write it as a certificate, signed. The signature indicate that you are a menace to the state. You should not have rights in the state. No rights. 
So every time you want to rise and become something, the certificate will be taken off. And say, so you can't. Because the record is here that you have transgressed against the society. So there is no upward movement. Your life is no constraint. They can easily blame you and look on you and say, you can't. Because you have committed a crime. Watch what he says. Having wiped out the handwriting of the certificate that was against you. Because the devil knows every sin you ever committed. He knows your record. Nobody not talking to me. I said he knows your record. He knows when you commit the adultery, fornication, lie, all those things. And so now you're trying to come to God. And the devil comes and said, no, God, you can't help him. You cannot look at his record. He's called the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He didn't say he comes to kill or to steal or to destroy. He says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He does all three. Oh, God. He's intended to do all three, to kill and destroy. And the record is against him that gives him upper hand over you. Are you hearing me? Upper hand over you. So every time you're struggling to do right, struggle, he speaks and he, he condemns you. But here comes Jesus. Come put back my scripture. Here comes Jesus. Colossians 2.40. Here comes Jesus the document, took the record that's against you and tore it. First of all, he tore the record. And any document that is that has been signed, ratified, if it is torn, it is of no more effect. Nobody at all here. If it's ripped up, it's of no more effect. So Jesus ripped up your record. The record that say you're not worthy. The record says you have sinned greatly. The record that was against you before God. Jesus tore it up and he nailed it to the cross as an evidence that no longer that there's no accusation against you that was contrary against you. He took it, nailed it to the cross. Then he turns to the devil. Watch this. Watch um, verse 15. Verse 15. Come on, verse 15. Oh, oh, yeah. Verse 15, verse 15, verse 15. Verse 15. <laughs> Having disarmed. Everybody said disarmed. <laughs> that means the devil had the gun. He had the gun pointing at you. Sticking you up. And saying, you can't do it. If you do it, I shoot you. For I come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But watch this. Jesus disarmed him. You know what he did? He take out the bullet out of the gun. And all he has is a gun without bullet. That's why he comes with the tactic of fear. And he come and stick you up. The accuser of the brethren. And tell you your sins are not forgiven. And tell you, you will never make it. And tell you, don't you see your grandpa and your great grandpa. They never made it. And they are this and they are that. And you will never make it. But I want to tell you today, it's an empty gun. Are you listening to me? It's an empty gun. And watch this now. Jesus who set you free. Now give you a loaded gun. <laughs> He gives you a loaded gun. So who has the advantage? I said, who has the advantage? I said, who has the advantage? For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. I don't know what has been set up in your life, but there's a weapon today. There's a weapon you have. You can pull down every stronghold, every weaknesses, every tendency, every stronghold, every misfortune, every mishap in your life. You can pull it down. Why? Because the enemy who is pointing at you, yeah, 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 his gun has no bullet. All he has is fear. 
Stand up in your home. Stand up in your workplace. Stand up where you are and tell every devil and demon, you're not going to have power over me. For behold, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by enemies shall hurt you. And I tell you today, you will rise. I announce to you today, you will rise. For there's a greater weapon in this house, which is the word of God. It's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm telling you, demolishing every stronghold. And I tell every stronghold in this house today, you got to come down. You cannot reign over the lives of the redeemed. For the redeemed is seated in heavenly places. In and I'm not just trying to be excited. I experience it. I said I experience it in my life. And we'll do it in yours today in the name of Jesus. If you tolerate where you are, you cannot change it. But if you say today enough is enough. I'm a bought with a price. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm in his likeness. I bear his image. And if I bear in the image, I can talk like him. Oh God, God. I can walk. Because godliness is not just doing good thing and right thing. Uh, godliness is acting like God. Nobody's not talking to me. Acting like God. That is why he said, be perfect as I am perfect. Are you listening? He says, act like me. For you are in my likeness. Act like me. Walk like me. Put on Jesus. Put him on. Put him on. And walk like him. You have dominion. I said you have dominion. You have dominion. You have dominion. Shake it off and let the devil take it back. You have dominion. Break that generational cycle. You have dominion. Break that streak of lack and, and depression. Break it because you have dominion. Come on, raise your hand and begin to praise him in this house. Come on, begin to praise him in this house. Come and begin to praise him in this house. Come and begin to praise him in this house. Come and begin to praise him in this house. Come and begin to praise him in this house. Come and begin to praise him in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stronghold is coming down. Oh God Almighty, there's a new beginning for somebody today. There is a new beginning for somebody today. Hope is restored. You will progress. You will not be chained. You will not be held, oh God, under the bondage. Because Jesus, for this reason, Christ has come to set us free. Free to become. Free to walk in the dominion of Jesus Christ. Everything that God purposed for you, he God says, I have given it to you. For I know the plans I have for you, says God. Plans not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Oh God Almighty, let no devil nor demon or people's opinion keep you down. You're, this is a day of rising. So he says rise, shine for your light has come and the glory of our God is now risen upon you. You are here for a reason and a purpose. There are people waiting on you, waiting on your testimony, waiting on the miracle working power of God on your life. Don't joke around. Yeah, stand up because you're in his likeness and it's your time. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say it's your time. It's your time. Come on, he say, it's your time. Come on. Yeah, 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 people of God, it's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Your time. It's 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 your time. The devil will not laugh at you no more. I said the devil will not laugh at you. I come to give you a message today. He will not laugh at you anymore. Because God says you're seated with me. You're seated with my son in heavenly places. Far above principality and power and, and might and dominion. And every name that is named. I don't care what name they put over you. I don't know what name they call you. There's a name that is greater than every name. And you're seated with him. And today you shall rise. Today you shall rise. Today you shall rise. I feel like I'm talking to somebody today. You shall rise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you in this house today, Father. Thank you, God. It's the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding. I thank you now. I thank you now. Today I want to stand with somebody. I want to stand with somebody today. I want to stand with somebody. Eh, you're pressed down. But I want to tell you, you are not crushed. Oh God, you might be compass here and there. But I'm telling you, your, your, your Savior, he has the last word. 
everything stop with him. And if he say you are free, if he say you will overcome, if he say you will be healed, if he say you can come, and if he say every generational curse is broken and you have come into a new dimension, if he say so, it is yours today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And I want to stand with you today. Because I sense, I sense victory in this place. I sense some people who have been going through some things in their life. And it seems as if you are all bogged down and the enemy has cornered you. But I want to tell you, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And there is no devil that can have the last word over your life. I tell you no last word. Jesus has the last word. And Jesus said, you are more than conqueror. You are more than conqueror. And I declare today that you are more than conqueror. Wherever you are right now, and you say, I'm facing some things in my life. Oh, and that's why God puts you in a body for where two shall agree, touching anything they shall ask. It shall be done. I said, what shall be done? For the Lord or God in the midst of us is mighty. He's right here, right now, this morning this hour and he's here to break every chain he's here to open our eyes that we can see for as we behold him we are changed from glory to glory from one excellence to the next we are changed and today God wants to remove some things in your life so you can see see the wondrous things that God has prepared and has released into your life. And I tell you, you will never be the same again. Again in this moment. So I want to pray for somebody. You've been cornered by the enemy. And it seems like your breakthrough ain't coming. I want to tell you, your breakthrough is here today. Your breakthrough is here today. And if you want me to agree with you, I want you to come and stand right here. Whatever it is, I want to stand with you. For he has deposit his inheritance in the same. For the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people make much power available. There is an available power right now in this house right here. Come and access it. Come and access it. Come and access it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come and access it. Come and access it. Can we get the worship team up here? Come and access it. Come and access it. It's not by feelings. Yeah. You know, I, I may preach and I may do all the things. But it's, th that's not where the power is. The power is in his promise. Oh, for we, we, we are partakers of his divine nature because of all the precious promises that he has given to us. That promise is accessible. Oh, God, I don't care what happened to you last year. Or, or, or some months ago, I'm telling you, though the mountains be shaken and though the hills be removed, yet he says, my loving kindness, I will not remove from you. Now my covenant will I break. I will have compassion on you. I will rescue you because you belong to me and I will not push away my likeness and I will not push away my image. You are the apple of my eyes. And as you lift your hands to him, he who loves you, he who cares for you, he who calls you, who, he who died on the cross so that you may stand and sit with him in the heavenly places. Now release to you whatever you desire in your heart. He release to you everything, oh God, God, that he has bequeathed and have planned for your life now is released to your life in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus it's released to you in the name of the Lord Jesus you will overcome you will ride over that you will have the wisdom you will have the insight you will know what to do when to do it how to do it where to do it with no devil will outwit you no devil will outwit you no devil will come for oh God not mighty none 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 but he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus he causes you he causes you he causes you even in your weaknesses even in your shortcoming he causes you to triumph receive it receive your answer receive your miracle 
We don't have to lay our hands on you. Receive. Receive. As Jesus said to the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? What do you? He says that I may receive not my eyes, but my sight. I want sight. I want sight. I want to see. I want to discern. I want to know in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, open our eyes. Open that we may see. That we may see. That we may see our healing. That we may see our deliverance. That we may see our freedom. That we may see that which is incomparable. Oh God, to nothing else. That we may have the wisdom. That we may have the inside that we may have that we may overcome every generational curse i break it now from you in jesus mighty name you shall rise to new levels to new levels to new levels come on come on. to new levels come on receive receive to new levels we're not playing church. We don't come because it's a traditional thing to come. This is the house of God. There's healing in His house. There's a lifting in this house. For He's the lifter of your head. The days of your embarrassment is over. The days of shame is over. Randa makoto yomosa, randa ma kenda raba soko robosa, ayanda masoka. The pres, ayaya. I'm telling you, the bo, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus. He's beginning to stir some things in your spirit. He's beginning to stir some things in your spirit. He's beginning to stir some things in your spirit. He's beginning to stir some things in your spirit. Robo kosa, we will not leave here the same way you came. In the name of the Lord Jesus, raba koko. There's some burden of some new things in you. Some burden of some things that have been lying dormant in your spirit. It's coming forth now. It's coming forth now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 Echo the Mosa. Randa Makataya. Randa Tekosa. for his presence today God has reunited you the passion for his word you shall begin to see things you never saw before oh Jesus we don't want to die ordinary Jesus we want to die fulfilling Jesus everything God has ordained for us so let us see God shine your light that we may see the glorious things you have prepared for us let us see God Lord let us see open our eyes Lord that we might see the riches of your glory power of your mind manifest yourself mighty God let them not say anymore 
where is your God? For we will not hang our harps upon the willows. We will not refuse to sing the songs of Zion. For Zion rejoice again. For deliverance is in Zion. Freedom is in Zion. Healing is in Zion. Oh, forgiveness is in Zion. Restoration is in Zion. Oh, grace in Zion. Oh, healing in Zion. More than enough in Zion. Touch and heal, oh God. Raise up again, oh God, in Zion. For you are God. God alone, God alone, God alone, God alone, move in this place, move in this place, God, 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 oh my God. We don't have to be emotional. But let me tell you something. Something has changed in your life. The Egyptians you see, you shall see them no more. That would stood up like a mountain before you. you didn't know what direction to go. Now you see the light. You see the way. And your testimony will be irrefutable. Because they will know it's not you. God has worked in your life. In your life. Believe me today. This is a moment. Don't let it pass you by. The presence of God was present to heal in the house. But only the man who came on the stretcher, four friends took him, laid him before Jesus. He was the only one who accessed that presence. Although the presence of God was present to you, access it to you. You access it by faith. It's yours. It's a turnaround. The answer has come to you now. It has come. Hear me today. It has come. It's different now. Madam, you will know what to do. No more confusion. You will know exactly what to do. But the Spirit of God, God Almighty, will see within you where to go, how to do it. is not moved by our noise, but it's moved by our heart. You hear me? You walked here today because you believed in what you heard. Therefore, the manifestation of what you have received will begin to manifest in your life. Take it as yours. Then thanksgiving becomes, watch this, thanksgiving is an indication that you have received. So I want to raise your hand and begin to thank him now. Come on, begin to thank him. No, don't clap. Don't clap. Say with your mouth, thank you. Come on, begin to thank him. Come on, begin to thank him. Thanksgiving is an indication you have received. We're not there ten cleans, but where are the nine? Come on, begin to thank him. Come on, begin to thank him. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to bless his holy name. It's a fruit of your lips. Thanksgiving is never silent. Come on, begin to thank him. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for your breakthroughs. Thank him that those strongholds are broken. Thank him that the, the curses are broken. Thank you that you're on a new level with God right now. Thank him. Thank him that what, that which couldn't turn around has turned around right now. Thank him. Thank him that the mental anguish that you've gone through is broken. The weaknesses that have followed generation have stopped. Thank him. Thank him that the pain is gone. The cancer is healed. Oh God Almighty. The diabetes have to bow to his name. 
thank him today. Thank him today. I declare your wholeness as it came over that one man who came back to give Jesus thanks. Wholeness has come to you. Now it affects your home. Now it affects your finances. Now it affects your going out. Now it affects you in your workplace. Now it affects you in your business. Yes. Receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for that breakthrough. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word has not returned to you void, but it accomplished this day what it is sent to. Thank you, Lord. Come on, those of you who are sitting down there, lift your hand. There's something to thank him about. Begin, begin to thank him in this atmosphere. He's the center of attraction. It's not about us. It's about him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the miracles, God. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for wisdom, understanding. Thank you for the information that you've given. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, mighty God. We give you praise, mighty God. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, God of heaven. We worship you. We adore you, mighty God. In this house, we say thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. 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 Give you praise. If you're standing in the front here, open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and give him praise if you're standing in the front here. Let it verbally come out of your mouth. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We declare it is done. We declare it is done. It is done. We receive it and we declare it is done. In Jesus' name, the breakthrough is there. The breakthrough has happened. And we thank you for that, Lord God. And Father God, now we're looking forward to see the manifestation of this breakthrough we're looking forward to see the manifestation of the breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus it is finished it is finished it is finished it is finished it has happened it is done we speak Jesus over our families we speak Jesus. We're going to sing that song now. We speak Jesus over our families, over our circumstance. And we continue to declare, declare Jesus over our families, and our circumstance, our, our workplace, everything. We declare it. We declare it. Pierre, can you please come help us with that song? Who with that song? Speak Jesus. Put the words on the screen for us. You need to let boldness rise up in you. We are not defeated. We are victorious. Amen. We are victorious. Can everybody stand in the house? Can everybody in the house stand? We're going to sing that song that I speak Jesus over my family, over my people, over my circumstance. And we're going to do it boldly this morning. Do we, do we, do we know this song? We know this song. Hey, we know it. We know this song. But you need to sing it like people who believe it and people who know it. Amen? Give the Lord a hand in this place. Come on. God has done great things in our midst this morning. God has done great things in our midst this morning. Let's sing that song. We're going to sing it. Jesus. Oh, yes.
done great things amongst us this morning amen hallelujah praise the lord you are above and not beneath you are the head and not the tail you are more than a conqueror in jesus christ my lord Je do, do not allow the enemy he's got an empty gun remember he has an empty gun his bullets has been removed we have the loaded gun use the loaded gun speak the word speak the truth not the circumstance are we going to do that Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we close, I feel in my spirit there's somebody, a man, specifically in this house. You did not come to the front, but you kind of said, God can't help me. I want you to know this morning, God's hand is on your life. I don't know who you are. If it's you, maybe you want to come to the front if it's you this morning, because you think it's so bad where you are. Not even a miracle from God can change that circumstance and you feel undone. If you are here this morning, if you want to come out for prayer, you're so welcome. If you want to come and see me after the, after the service, come see me. But I want to say to you, it's not the end until God says it's finished. It's not over until God says it's over. 
There's hope in Jesus Christ. Today, yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same God. The God that has brought you through. I need to say this to somebody here. The God that has brought you through in the past is the God that will bring you through in the future. He has not changed. He has not changed. He is there to help you and sustain you. He's been faithful previously. He will be faithful again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Did you receive the word this morning? Bishop, thank you so much. You truly blessed us. The word brings life. It brings light. It brings hope. And such a lot of hope has been stirred up this morning in our hearts. And we want to thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for sharing God's word with so much passion. You did receive it. You did enjoy it. You didn't make it your own. Come on, give the Lord a hand in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, so before we go home this morning, uh, Pastor Lesiba did warn you that we will be taking another offering before we leave. Um, and I know in this atmosphere, you might feel, why now? No, we have to do it now. Uh, because we have been stirred in our hearts. We have been blessed in our hearts. And when we have been blessed, let, let us sow seed back into God's kingdom. We're taking up an offering for Bishop Samuels. Of course, it takes a lot of money to get here. It takes a lot of money to, to do what God has called him to do. And we can partake. We can be partners in that ministry. We can empower him now to go back and to do even more for the Lord. Just, in, in, they are going to Brazil shortly. They're going to Latin America. They're moving around so fast. We can be partners in what God is doing through his ministry. And it's a privilege to show into a ministry like this. This is good soil. You can testify to that. So when we sow now, I'm going to ask you to sow. There's a chest here. There's a chest at the back. There's also a card machine at the information desk. Uh, that you can also give that way and bring the slip then and put it in. So we will know which goes where. Um, if the Lord stirs that on your heart. Do not run out. Don't give your offering and run out the door. Let us close in an orderly fashion. Amen. So we're going to play that Speak Jesus again. We're going to sing it with boldness. And we're going to speak Jesus. Amen. We're going to speak Jesus. And then when you speak Jesus, you bring your offering and you speak that over your seed that you are, that you are sowing this morning. And then we're going to go back and we're going to close in, serve, in, in, in prayer. Let's, let's do that. Let's bring your offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord.
We're going to close in prayer. Continue to speak the name of Jesus. Continue to make this word your own. And let us live this word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Samuels, once again, thank you so much. We really appreciate the fact that you came all the way from Jamaica. Uh, this week is flying back home. And uh, you've honestly blessed us. We are so blessed that you were here. Thank you so much. Give the Lord a hand for <laughs> Bishop Samuels. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, we want to pray for your servant, your son, Philemon Samuels. You have called him by name. You know everything about him. You know his challenges. You know the fatigue on the body when you have to fly all over the world to do the work of the Lord. And we are praised, Lord God, that you will absolutely sustain him. That you will not only sustain him, but that you will have supply overflow in his life. That he will never have any lack, never any need in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you declare your word wherever it goes, Father God, we thank you that there will be a great harvest coming in because of the sacrifice he is making, Father. We bless him abundantly this morning from this family to his family in Jesus' name. And we thank you for that, Father. For every person in this house that came out this morning, every, every family that is represented in this house today, our children that are not here, our faraway family, our parents, our siblings, we lift them up to you, Father God, and we pray for breakthrough for them. We pray that our families will come into your kingdom, that they will see the light, that they will come to salvation, come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Lord, as we leave this building this morning, we know that you have called us to be the light, to be the hope for them, to be the word for them, an open letter. The word of God is an open letter that we are for them that they can read. And our praise, Father God, that you will absolutely come and use us as your children to impact the nations, to make a difference in our families, at our workplaces, wherever we move, that we will be your light your salt, your hope to a world that desperately need direction and that you will be glorified in and through us. I bless us as a family as we leave you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There we go. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Greet your family and then you may be off. God bless you. Break every soul.